every now and then, I'm just taken back in amazement, <laughs> as you can see, by just what God has done. I mean, you know, some people probably think, wow, look around. Man, that must have cost a lot of money. Or they think, wow, that person's wealthy or that person has means or has something more than what I have. And part of that may be true in one way. If you don't have the Lord, then you really don't have all this. You have what you have done on your own. But if you see anything around here that's a blessing, if you see anything that's like growing and showing and knowing God, then really, that's from the Lord. Because He brought all of this to me that I might enjoy the goodness of God. Not just for myself. Oh, can you smell that? Maybe not. Oh, I can. <laughs> but God wanted to bless me because I'm blessing Him. I'm taking my time to, in the morning, walk with Him and talk with Him. I'm taking my time to spend some time with God. And because I do, He, being in His presence, blesses me anyways, just because He is who He is. I could not be anywhere near God without being blessed in some way, whether it be emotionally, healing of emotions, whether it be spiritually, giving me fruits of the Spirit like peace, love, and joy, whether it be physically, like, you know, ailments of my body, irregardless, the longer that I walk with God and talk with Him, the more that I spend time with Him, the more, in reality, I am blessed. And I'm just so dumbfounded by that. I can't imagine why anyone wouldn't want to be a Christian. I mean, yeah, I'll admit, sometimes it's hard, sometimes it's a little tough, And as most of you know, almost all of this came from like 99 cent stores. And most of it is like taking out of our food budget sometimes to buy a plant. Because <laughs> we certainly don't have means and money. But God has taken what little bit we have and blessed us with it. I mean, the amazing thing is, is where I live is exceptionally hot. Sometimes we get 100 degree weather that just stays for days, you know. It may not be like Texas, but it gets pretty hot here in California. And where I'm at, the porch gets really hot. And so, amazingly, we just barely moved into this place that we call our little Shiloh, so to speak, you know, our, our place of refuge, you know. and. Uh, The, or Bethel, I should say. We call it our Bethel, our house of God, you know, because it's like, wow, praise the Lord. We didn't know that the Lord was here. And we've only been here a couple months and we noticed that the air conditioning didn't really work, so we mentioned it to the management and they're going to get us a brand new air conditioner because they've been using old units for so long that starting with us, they're going to do brand new. Wow, I think that's cool. <laughs> so I think this week we get to get a new one. That to me is just outrageous. So cool, so good of God to bless us with that. And you know, that's why we do what we do because it's not about, oh look at me and see how good I am, because I'm not. And it's not about how God has blessed me. But it's about if God could use someone as little as I am 
and as ignorant as I am, speaking of ignorance, I remember this brother, I won't embarrass him by giving his name, but you know who you are. He was kind of talking to me the other day, and he wanted to give me a compliment, and he says, oh, Missler's got nothing on you, and I was laughing, I was saying, want to bet? <laughs> it's like, Missler is like out there, you know, and while my mind may go out there, I could never keep up with Chuck, because he's kind of Missler, that is. He's got it all at his fingertips. He used to work with the Bible Answer Man, Walter Martin. And, uh, man, talk about sharp. Man, if iron sharpens iron, that's where Missler got it from, because he was, boy. <laughs> you ever been to one of his studies in person? Man, it's just powerful. Especially when it's in just the Word of God, you know, not necessarily a topical study. But, anyways, he was complimenting me and trying to make me feel good, you know. I'll die. Man, I know what I am. I am the least of all God's servants. I'm a guy that's just saved by grace. You know, I'm a chiefest of sinners. Matter of fact, don't leave me alone very long because <laughs> I'll dive in the pool. A sin, that is. Because <laughs> it looks good. It feels good. It is good till it kills you. <laughs> so I need to really be prayed for. <laughs> but... Amazingly, God chooses to use someone like me to talk to someone like you about the goodness of God and how He can bless you, just like He's blessed me, just like He's encouraged me in His Word as I faithfully, not every day, most days, you know, because some days I don't read them right away, and although since I started the ministry, yeah, I read my devotionals every day, but... Before I used to read them, you know, like sometime during the day I'd get into my devotionals. And God wants you to not be legalistic about it and to not be pessimistic about, you know, whether God is real or not, but to be optimistic about maybe God will meet you there, wherever it is, whether it be in the morning, the noon, or the night, or all through the day. You need to kind of be optimistic about it in the sense that he will be found to those that seek Him if they seek Him with all of their heart. So, you really got to want God in order to meet God. Because if you don't want to meet Him, believe me, no matter what you do, He ain't going to be there. <laughs> but if you love Him, and you really want to spend some time with Him and be encouraged, then meet with God in the morning. Spend some time meditating. And meditation is not a bad word, it's a good word. Meditating on the Word, you know. Thinking about God himself and his son considering his spirit considering the way you are and the things that you do and planning out your day by talking it over with God in a simple way it doesn't have to be complicated it can be real easy sometimes it's just about reading thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel and Aaron shall hear their names before their Lord Interesting. Aaron shall hear their names before the Lord. Kind of interesting. Reread that and notice the word says hear, not say or speak. Jesus, because he continueth forever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet he without sin. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him, and the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. Interesting, isn't that? He shall dwell in safety all day long. You know, I've always taken that kind of for granted. It's like, from the moment I got saved, 
I've gone out of my way to prove grace, <laughs> which you know what that means, and to prove that God is true. So I've gone into harm's way lots of times. And God may have taken me right to where I was shaking in my booties, but through it all, He has kept me safe. And that has been in some pretty violent places and some violent times. Now, me personally, I think I should have died. <laughs> and I would not have been surprised had that happened. But God said at some point in time through one of his psalms that I would not die. He gave me a promise that I would live and declare his glorious works. That he wanted me as a testimony that if he could use someone like me, if he could deliver, protect, keep, give mercy to, forgiveness to, grace to someone like me, then he would use me to tell other people that, hey, if God could save me, hey, he could save you too. Because <laughs> he'll say to the uttermost, if you come to God through Jesus Christ. Because you see, that's all it requires is simply that turn to Jesus and you'll find that he more than any other person in the world or any other idea you may have will bring to you salvation because he is a high priest in some order that we don't even know anything about. The only thing we know about it is that it's called Melchizedek or Mel Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Well, it is. It's, it's Melchizedek, you know, Hebrew. What can I say? You know, I'm trying to invent a new way of pronouncing it and I can't come up with that right now. But the point being is that God has chosen Jesus to be, as a member of his own family, a priest forever for us, making intercession or talking to his Father about us so that we would have that personal relationship but also have a good word when we don't feel like we're close to God. That God himself would still be talking to God about us. So, Jesus, as our High Priest, as well as our Savior and our Lord, is always on our side talking to God about us, talking to His Father for us, helping us when we feel far away from God. Because any one of us, if you're like me, sometimes don't feel so close to God. Sometimes we feel kind of like a little out of it, or maybe a little full of it. Or maybe far from it. But either way, whether you're with it or without it, God, if you're a Christian, if you turn your life over to Jesus, God himself is working on you. He's working in you. Sometimes he's working with you. Sometimes he's working on you. You know, it's kind of like a partnership thing. Whether you do it or not, he's going to keep working on you. And it's going to take a lifetime. Because you're not going to get there overnight. On that night, the king could not sleep. Thou beholdest my eyes in wakening. Who is likened to the Lord our God, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? He doeth according to his will in the army of heaven, and among the habitants of the earth. Thy way is in the sea, and thy path is in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known. Surely the wrath of man shall praise thee. The remainder of wrath shalt thou not restrain. Oh, shalt thou restrain. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. You know, it's kind of a funny thing about God. We know he made everything. That kind of goes without saying. Hmm. 
We know he made it in a wide variety of forms and methodology, so to speak. But however he did it, which wasn't creation, <laughs> no offense. I mean, it wasn't evolution, but was creation. We know that God, as creator, made everything. The very fact that he made it automatically puts me kind of like, oops, uh-oh, it's gone. But then, you know, the more that I encounter God in a personal way, the more I've had dealings with him in an intimate way, the more that God has talked to me and shown me things that I've never known before, the less I'm concerned about my feelings and misconceptions about Him, and the more that I'm absorbed by His love for me, the more that I'm wrapped up into who He is. even as this little hummingbird goes humming into my... I don't know if you saw it on camera, but this hummingbird just flew in and kind of flew around. And he's still flying out there, which is kind of cute. Because we do have a hummingbird feeder, but every time that God wants to bless me, he sends me these little hummingbirds, and it's like, ooh, <laughs> I get kind of God, goosebump time. And... The Spirit of God, of course, that's how He does that, is that He chooses to manifest Himself any way He wants to. And right now, the way He chooses to do that for me is a hummingbird. He's done it in the past in like seagulls and the wind and all these things. But He is a person. He's not a thing. He's not an object. He's not in the hummingbird or the hummingbird itself, but He just manifests Himself through these things. Even the same way that God can manifest Himself through Jesus and Jesus is God or through us as we are becoming sons and daughters of God it's kind of a mystery thing but I like that because you know the more that I understand that the more I realize God loves us so much so that he will meet us some way somehow sometime in this place that we call life. He will meet us, greet us, and talk to us in a way that we will understand. Now, I don't comprehend all that, really. I just take it for granted. Or, you could say, I take it by faith. Because I'm so confident of it and happy about it that I just assume everybody knows it. But maybe you don't. Maybe you don't know that God, since you've accepted His Son, you've accepted the Father. And that because you have Jesus, you have the Father who loves you. And He loves you in such an intimate, personal, real way that He's willing to send hummingbirds your way. Or His Son. Or a word. Or a feeling sometimes. Or an impression. He's willing to be still with you, to be quiet, to close your eyes and see heaven, to open your heart and feel God, to allow the Holy Spirit to breathe upon you peace. Do you know God that way? No? Do you know He's looking the whole world over just for someone like you? Just someone who's willing to be simple, humble, tender, gentle, meek, kind. Someone that He can be everything for when we will allow ourselves to be humbly and, quite frankly, pridelessly 
trusting in him. I need someone like that. I need a God like that. I need my Father to be just like He is. Because of that, I'm blessed. Maybe you will be too.